you've seen them so many times, especially like we've had some great camera work in some tournaments over the years where you see these fish just lull behind that frog and something finally just triggers them to bite. So I think it's so key to make sure you don't pull it out of that area when you get that bite because you've already got his attention. That's the hardest part, right? Yeah, you just yes. gotta get him to commit. Well, and I, I have a mantra that I do. I like keep it coming. Like, yeah. and that's yes. kind of what I do yes. is I, you got to fish through the strike and yes. you got to, you keep it coming because like when you, when you have the explosion and you make that next movement with your rod, like you said, you'll see the line swim off Yes. or you'll feel the fish on the bait That's right. or you won't feel them on the bait and it lets you know to keep it coming. That's right. And here's, here's the one thing that I've noticed and um, I think it's cool. I don't want to share it with you guys. The second strike, he's going to kill it. He's going to get it. He is going to yes. get it because he's pissed that he missed it the first Billion time. Percent. His flare gills are flared. His dorsal fins up. He's really mad now, and he'll, he'll most oftentimes completely connect with it on the second strike if you can manage to get there. Absolutely. And if and and on rare occasions you need to keep it going to the third strike, and then there's no question he's going he's to. He's going to get it. He's in the boat. He's going to get it. If, but he, <laughs> if they miss it and they're not committed, they're not going to get it that second time. Right. You'll know pretty quick though. He'll, yep. you know, the, the action will kind of cease. The wake may leave. You know, there's so many telltale signs on a frog of how they're acting and how they're reacting to it. I want to ask you this because you're you're a frog guy. When do you change colors on a frog? Because that's something we see a lot. We so many. It's like every other lure. But now frog colors have changed. You know, originally it was like more natural colors, and now we're seeing bluegill. We see shad. Is that something you will do? Uh, it, it is. I, and I, I, I have a lot of different colors for certain situations, but I do keep it pretty simplistic. And Ish Monroe, guys, got to go check Ish's seminars at Bass U TV. The frog guy. The frog guy, and, and he's very simplistic, and he uses black in the dark conditions and white in the sunshine. Right. That's a. And that's not always going to be the way, but man, is it a great way to get started learning how to frog fish. You don't need a box full. You don't. Yeah. And, and, and that's what he starts with. But it's funny because I, I had a great experience just, well, sort of great, down at James River Open. I didn't do that well in the tournament, but I was frog fishing and I was fishing pads. And I started out with the hollow belly frog and I had a black hollow belly frog and it was low light conditions and, and, um, and I had what three i think three of them blew up blew the frog out of the water not connecting with that bait so two things occur to me is it the color or is it the uh, style of frog because to, to me there's two real categories there's the buzz toads that's right category and there's the hollow belly mm -hmm. and so my first choice was to go to a white uh hollow belly and stay with it and I would got no reaction from that at all. But I switched up to the buzz toad. Really? And uh, I connected, I connected with fish. And it was, you know, it was crazy. They, they needed it. If it sat too long like a hollow belly does, it's moving slower. They get too good a look at it. They were blowing it out of the water and not committing. But moving that buzz toad really fast, they couldn't get a good look at it. I was getting those fish to That's commit. So speed was the key to the trigger, you know? And most of the time those fish are up there, they want to bite. I mean, they're up there feeding around or they want to re they'll react. I mean, and that's that's a prime example. That's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome except for they were only this big. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you on size, especially with the James River. That's on you, I mean, Pete. Come on, you're frog fishing. It's yeah. supposed to be the biggest fish in the lake, but not that day. Well, I was around the little it, one. It is truly amazing sometimes the size fish that will actually eat a frog. You, know? it, it's you would think it would be intimidating to a smaller bass, 14 right. inches and smaller, but right. Not, not always the case. No, nah, they, they love to do it. And uh, and I tell you, we, we fish around, um, right now, this carp spawn's going on around us, and they blow those carp eggs everywhere, and the bluegills get up and and eat those carp eggs. Well, a lot of times, why am I fishing a frog? You know, or it, it, they're, you're actually representing a bluegill Absolutely. in that situation. And, and that's, you know, that's what those big bass are gonna key on. And a big bass will eat a bluegill, it takes a big bass to eat a bluegill. Love them though. They love they love bluegill more than, I think more than anything most I, of the time. I agree, most, most pond management groups. That's exactly what I was fixing to say. You, you take yes. care of your bluegills, you will have giant yeah, bass I'm actually in that building pond. a small pond right now and that's the number one thing you hear from uh, yeah. all different biologists. 
Bluegill, 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 bluegill. Hey, what about some thrifting? No, yeah. bluegill. And the information Bash University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.